I like from there, I would definitely say my, my MPC 1000. I love the 1000. I've been running with that for ever since they made it. So I'm, I'm good with that. What's up? You got your boy, Direct, AKA Native Shades. And we talking about the MPC 1000. What had happened was <laughs> the MPC 1000, the Kai MPC 1000. The 1000 is probably one of the best MPCs that came out for the money. Why? It's really about the price range it was at and the amount of features that it had. Before the MPC 1000, most MPCs was just too expensive. You know, it was really expensive. So you had to be pretty much a real deal producer if you wanted these uh, equipment. You couldn't just be playing around and say, hey man, let me, um, let me go spend $2,000 and just fish around on this MPC and see if I like it. No, you had to really know what you were doing. Um, because basically you were spending car money. <laughs> so the MPC 1000 was probably the first time Akai put a, it was still expensive. It was still about a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars and change, but Akai made it so that the average man can purchase the 1000 and get busy. And when it came out, it was the smallest MPC. It's um, it's not as portable as the 500, you know, being that the 500, you can throw batteries in it and just put it in your backpack and keep it moving. The MPC 1000, you can put it in your backpack and keep it moving, but you still got to plug it in and everything like that. But this was one of the great MPCs for the money. It, it had pretty much all the features of the 2500. You know, it was just a smaller version of it. And that's what made it cool. The thing about the 1000 is that when it came out, it had the Akai OS in it, the Akai operating system in it. So the lore about the MPC 1000 was that it had the Akai OS in it. And rumor has it that there was this programmer, JJ. <laughs> Supposedly during the producing of the 1000, there was a lot of features that he felt should be on the unit. Let's say Akai guys are working on something and he's like, hey man, why don't you guys put in, um, why don't y'all make the time stretch like this? And they're like, ah, nah, nah, nah. We're just, we're just gonna keep it the way it is, man. We're, we're good. Like, no, why don't y'all do this? Why don't y'all uh, make the note repeat like this? Nah, we're good. Hey man, why don't y'all give it um, settings uh, closer to this NPC? Uh, yeah, they, oh, nah, nah, you know, that we're all right. We're just going to keep do the standard thing that we're supposed to do. So JJ supposedly got pissed off because he felt that the 1000 should have more features than it did and should be able to do more things that the Akai OS was uh, capable of doing. He felt, hey, man, we could really trick out this unit. But Akai was like, no, you know, we're going to we're going to stay safe and keep to the standard thing that we're using. So JJ supposedly left and was just like a rogue developer. He was like, you know what? Freak this. I'm out of here. <laughs> so Akai puts out the MPC 1000 and, you know, people are like, OK, you know, the people that got to 2500 is like, OK, so this is a smaller 2500. OK, whoop de whoop, big deal. But they're like, okay, we like it for the price. It's cheaper, so you know we'll probably get it. But long behold, to their surprise, JJ, this rogue developer, started developing his own operating systems for the uh, 1000. Started constantly updating the unit. You know, it was like every month it would be a new feature JJ would be adding in. So he'll be like, okay, this is a new way that you guys can time stretch on the machine. Okay, this is a new way that you guys can use the sequencer to do this. Okay, this is a new way for you guys to use note, note repeat or something on the machine. So JJ was constantly updating the machine that it made it better than the Akai OS. So people would buy the unit 
in order to get the JJOS. At first, you know, you would think that this rogue developer creating a different operating system for the 1000 would hurt the sales, but it actually did the opposite. More people was buying the 1000 because they were hearing about this JJOS that basically made the 1000 almost compatible to the 4000, almost compatible to like a DAW or something like that. So they was like, yeah, yeah, let me get the 1000 and get the JJOS. You know, even though getting that OS would void your Akai OS and it would no longer be in warranty, they were like, listen, I, we don't care. This JJOS is dope. We have a developer that's constantly updating this unit every month for us. All the features that we're dreaming of and that we want, he's putting it in this machine. No, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get his OS and we don't mind paying the extra for his OS. We're gonna we're gonna do that and we're gonna make bangers. <laughs> so that's pretty much what happened with the Akai MPC 1000. Um, it's shortcomings. It wasn't a lot. I heard that a lot of people complained about the pads. They said they had to change the pads out, you know. Um, I heard they said the, the the blue one, you know, the blue MPC 1000 was kind of buggy. That These are the rumors that I heard. I'm not sure because, you know, I don't own a 1000, but these are just the rumors I heard over the years. But um, other than that, it probably was one of the greatest MPCs for the dollar. JJ really did his thing with his OS, his operating system. He really listened to the people and gave the people what they wanted. So um, if you got an MPC 1000, I'm sure you're very happy. I, I rarely hear someone with the 1000 complain. So um, yeah, that's the MPC 1000. What had happened was... <laughs> So this is your boy, Direct, a.k.a. Native Shades, telling you to like and subscribe. And I'm signing off.